Hello modelers, time to finish the jeep. Today we will take the shotgun painting and weathering approach, better known as let's throw some shit at the wall and see if it sticks. The truth is that I don't have a standard procedure yet. I have only finished 5 vehicles in my modeling career so far and 3 of those are motorcycles, so it will be a random bunch of easy techniques in order to get my proverbial decent result to put on a diorama. Let's dig into it. This time I didn't want to play with all those parts and I mounted everything that I could. The cleaning was done with isopropanol and a soft brush. If you remember the disaster with the zoomed up, this time I used a better one. I ran out of black primer, so I took my trusted Tamiya surface primer. Quick, easy and good results, but I did it outside. First, we will cover the entire vehicle in black. If I had black primer, this would be solved. For painting, I will use the Olive Drop Modulation Set from Amo by Mic. Everything will be tinted with Mr. Leveling Thinner. You will be thinking, acrylics and lacquer thinner? Seriously? Don't worry, it works great with Amo's acrylic paints. But don't try it with a case. Been there, done that. So, the black undercoat is there to cover everything. So later, if the paint doesn't go into all the corners, those will result in deep shadows. I started with the darkest color. I gave an overall coat to everything. You should start with a light mist and after a minute you can proceed more heavily. I will not bother you with every shade. I used all the colors from the set. Every lighter shade was applied to a smaller surface. The lightest one was used only on the most exposed parts. Here is a trick that I learned from Uncle Nightshift. After the painting I sprayed everything with leveling thinner. It should melt the paint for a second to obtain a smoother surface. At the end I sealed everything with a heavy coat of VMS satin varnish. I thinned it with Amo acrylic thinner. It should be applied wet. I am still not sure if I'm doing this correctly. I glued the body onto the chassis and now we can take a look at the paint job. I can say that I managed to get a pretty good result. Finally, the different shades are visible. I will kindly remind you to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. It helps me a lot. This is my favorite subject. Not. I hate them. Anyway, I applied some microset on the surface where the decal should go. Let's see if it's moving in the water. When it was moving freely on the paper, I took it and gently transferred it on the surface with a soft brush. You can apply some more water to move it into place with a toothpick or a brush. When you are happy with the position, gently squeeze the water out with a cotton sweat. At the end, you can tap it with soft paper. The next step is applying microset with a soft brush in order to soften them and make them conform to the surface. And this is all my knowledge of decals for now. I'm glad that this is over. Although I don't like them, I must say that they bring a lot of life to the model. The decals were sealed with another thick coat of VMS satin varnish. From now on the procedure is a bit chaotic, so the shotgun approach it is. I started with chipping. The lightest paint from the set, plus some white to make it lighter and the sponge application. The only thing that I had in mind was to not exaggerate it as always. The light chips were refined and unified in some points with a very fine brush. The paint mix was the same. For the dark chips 
I used my usual mix of dark grey and dark brown, both are from Valeo. You should put those where the paint is chipped to the metal. The seats were painted in khaki. The paint was fairly thin. Three coats were needed for proper coverage. The tires were painted with a mix of dark grey and white. It is a good start for rubber. The first color for the wooden tools, handles, was dark flesh. And the tool metal parts were primed with a light grey mix that I made from dark grey and white that were already on the palette. But any grey will do the job. Now the king, Mr. Pinwash himself. I chose dark brown for green vehicles from Amo. I thinned it down with white spirit. It was applied around the details and along all the corners. When you use thin wash, the later cleaning is mostly unnecessary. But if some spills occur, you should blend them or clean them away with a clean brush and some white spirit. To speed things up, I use my vintage hair dryer. My wife's grandmother was using it and it is still working. And the sound is amazing. I kind of like those old things. The same wash was used to blend in the decals. We must knock out that new look. In this case it was used as a filter or dirt effect. Black wash, also from Amo, was used on the tires. A nice overall application. Basically we are doing a filter and a wash at the same time. Now I will invite you to join my Patreon team. If you want me to become your personal diorama tutor, you can send me your work and I will help you improve your skills. You will also get almost daily content from me and you will be able to choose topics for future projects. It costs only 4.5 euros per month. This is less than a big beer in Italy. Thanks to Alpenhauler, Jack McKee, Matea and Rock who are already getting all of this. The link is in the description. I made some wood grain with flat earth from Valeo. I must refine my skills here, but even this will somehow do the job. At the end, a red-brown filter from AK was applied. This adds the final touch. The dark brown wash was applied into the corners and was blended in. For the metal parts, I applied some streaking rust effects from Amo and blended them in with white spirit. And the tools are done. For the glasses I used PVA straight from the bottle. The nice thing about it is that it makes an elastic bond and all the excess white glue will turn in semi-clear when dry. As on the cubel wagon I'll use PVA to give some grime to the glass. This time you should thin it very well with water. Just apply some to the entire glass and spread it around. After a minute or so, you can clean out the excess with a cotton sweep. Time to mount the windshield. I was trying to put it in place properly and oops, the rifle fell off. It's better this way, I didn't like how it turned out anyway. Time to do some damage to the inner floor. Here we can say I used the reverse chipping method. First I applied some chips in a silver color. Then I took the dark chip color. The same as for the external chips. And at the end I blended in everything with the light chipping color. Again the same from the beginning. And before I show you an amazing way to paint the lights, there is another thing. Another YouTube creator, this time from Poland, called the Mons PL. Fantastic dioramas about different subjects. This is his last work. If you share this material on your social media because maybe your friends don't know about Coldemons PL. He may seem a little rough, but don't worry, he's a very nice guy. Check it out. And say that the devil is sending you. Haha. <laughs> the link is in the descriptions. And now the lights. 
First thing, you should paint all the lights in a silver color. Here I use the steel from Amo. And now for the magic moment. I took some flat red from Tamiya and tinted it with some water. Those colors are strange for brush painting, but in this case all you have to do is fill the circles with paint. Easy peasy. And the results are great. I did some highlights on the seats. I added some white to the original khaki color. Now they look much more interesting. And here you can see our jeep. I was happy with the result and now I think that I should have stopped at this point. Some dust with the airbrush on the diorama and finito. But unfortunately I went on with the next step. I don't know why, but I have this need to use the enamel dust effect from Amo at the end. I don't know how to use it properly and as I said an airbrush dusting with buff would be more than enough. But it is what it is. Next time I will definitely skip this. Here you can see the final result and the comparison with the motorcycle. Which by the way is also entirely covered with video on my channel. At the end I took a soft brush and some white spirit and I tried to clean most of the dust effect away. But I didn't film it. I was too angry. And also this one is done. Tell me what you think about my shotgun approach. One thing is for sure. I like to work fast. And this was fast. I did everything in 4 working days. And the result, well, it's decent in my opinion. In the next one we will probably paint the figures, and then only the scenario painting remains. If I'm honest, I'm getting a little tired of this project, so the next ones will be much shorter. You can also write down some wishes, what do you want me to cover? Until the next one, be cool, stay healthy and keep watching my videos. Bye!